are here live, CitystreetsMe.com. We are down in the beautiful city of Wichita, Kansas, downtown at Club Ono. Down here with Mr. Big Sam, clean mess over everything. All right, so we are gonna jump right off into the video, and before we get like in depth, yeah. clean mess over everything. You know what I'm saying? Hook, hook me up with the verbiage on that. What is that? Basically, um, clean mess is an oxymoron. Uh, you know, uh, it started when somebody told me I was a mess a while back, and I said, you know, but I'm clean though. And it also is a play on words because uh, on the exterior I come off as a very clean individual. On the inside, I have some uh, that's some thoughts going rapid that uh, might get me in an insane asylum somewhere or, or on top of the world. Right on. You know who you at? So, and uh, the whole clean mess over everything is that a lot of people have that money over everything model. Not just clean mess over everything. You part of me, part of clean mess, and uh, you over everything. Word up, coming something different, something new in yeah. 2012. I like that. I like that. So let, let's go. Let's go ahead and dig a little bit. Now it's time for me to be nosy. Okay. So tell me about what made you become an artist. Why? What? Who? went, When? And where? What motivated you? Uh, a long time ago, I was motivated by MC Hammer. I don't MC Hammer. Uh, just watching him and it's like, wow, that's pretty cool. I like that. Did you have some hammer pants? I did. I did. I did. My mom would buy me those hammer pants. I don't. <laughs> I was definitely I was influenced by MC Hammer, uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Like, so that's one of the main reasons I grew my hair out. Wow, those Bone Thugs and Harmony, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre. I used to love um, East Coast rappers, but then I didn't like the beats too much. Right. So then I kind of transitioned to West Coast rappers, and their beats were really hard. And then somewhere down the line, the transition shifted to just hip hop in general. Wow. Like, I've never been one of the, a lot of guys are interested in um, all the extremely cultural, never been too much into rock music or any other genres as much as hip hop. Hip hop and old school R&B, I like Johnny Taylor. Uh, embodying the whole soul food, using the soul food, kicking it down like that. Yeah. Which which throws me right into my next question. Talk to me about. I'm gonna pick up a Big Sam CD, right? Uh huh. Tell me what I'm gonna hear that's different from not even just say Wichita, but what's gonna be different from Big Sam than every artist that's ever picked up a microphone before. Every artist. I want to say right now is most definitely the soul and the passion. I love what I do. I mean, I can take it and with the clean mess of the body, and that is different genres of hip-hop. I can take you from a lyricist to partying to hanging out with girls to in-depth real stuff about my life. Right on. And uh, I guess in one word, genuine. Genuine. You like that. You like that. So talk to me about when you when you speak about genuine. And, I, and I've asked a lot of artists this question. I mean, uh, artists, musicians, painters, everybody. Is it, is it more important to you as an artist to be one of the all-time mainstream selling artists, or for you to be remembered after everything is done as somebody who just was a real lyricist that put out a beautiful picture for people in the body? For me, I believe you can do both. Like my favorite, my favorite hip hop artist of all time is Jay Z, wow. and uh, he kind of encompasses the whole entire. I'm still staying true to myself while being mainstream. Right. Showing growth and teach out that he's put out. Basically, being a grown man about his business, uh -huh. and I, I believe that that embodies a lot of genuine that I portray. I won't say portray because that's more like fake, but that's right. what I exhibit as well. Okay, okay, I like that. We're getting deep now. See, I'm going Barbara Walters up in here. Okay, I'm getting <laughs> getting 2020 up here. All right. So, so with that, talk to me about how, how long you been how long you been rapping? How long you been doing the thing? I've been rapping since uh, middle school. I used to battle guys and lunch and all that stuff, but I didn't start taking it serious here on the hip hop scene until about six months to a year ago. Right. And after that it was like, wow, pretty good. Yeah, I, yeah, I, can, I, can, I can do this. Okay. Okay, so with that, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pick your brain a little bit. Is there a moment that you can remember, whether it was middle school, whether it was a performance, whether it was just pinning lyrics to a track, when you sat back and you said, okay, this is me, this is a career, I, I belong, I can do this. I would say that may have been the, I have a track called How Could You Not Love Me? And it's kind of, with that I was like, you know, I can, I can take over the world. With the, the right, right people, right, the right goals and the right mindset, this could, this could very much work. I do Digging it, digging it, I like that. Speaking of goals, speaking of right people around you, in five years, 
What does Big say? A clean mess over everything. Where, where does he see himself at? Is he just clean mess over Wichita or is he clean mess like oh, AT&T no. Global? Where I'm you trying at? To go, I'm trying to go global, but the three year, well, I'll say the one year goal right now is to more or less take over Wichita. Three years from now, we want to regionally be where we need to be. And five years from now, I don't want to just be a, a rap or artist. I want to be a brand. I don't want to be a face or something. Man, what a business plan. Definitely. All right, see, listen, this is what we be talking about. You know what I'm saying? Y'all better keep it young, black, and young, and successful in Wichita. You know what I'm saying? It's more than just what you see and what you do. It's how we get in there. And speaking of how we get in there, talk to me about, as far as, as your hustle, your grind, what are you doing to solidify and set yourself apart from other artists in the city, other artists nationally? I'll start with the city first, um, I could go for hours on the scene, but uh, a lot of things on the Wichita scene we see is everybody's cool with each other, but that's as far as it goes. Right. I'm one of those guys where I'll, go on, I'll jump on a song with everybody, I show support to everybody, so it's more or less just showing up, the saying, you be the change you want to see. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's kind of what I like to bring out on the city. And globally, I just basically continue to be me and the people around me, we've got a lot of plans in motion. Right on. And so right with that, we're hoping to, I guess, take over without sounding uh, too arrogant or anything. But I definitely, um, I like the, the thought of power, more or less. Money, power, and respect. And with those three, we basically have what people see as the American dream. Right. And I like to think that with power, we can definitely take it. Right. And that's just not power in the sense of I'm stronger than everybody, but power is in a position to, on that five-year plan we were speaking of, I can employ some younger guys. Right. There could be a guy that really likes to rap, and I could be like, well, I'm through rapping now, I want to, I can be your boss. Right. I can show you the role. Things like that. Right. Modeling, all types of things. Getting it in. Yeah. Being diverse. That's what we're doing, diversifying. Okay? I'll ask. So, speaking about that, since, since you know, there's, there's individuals like yourself and everybody out there, it seems like Wichita is transitioning into a movement. There is a movement starting. Talk to me about what do you think has been maybe some of the biggest problems past of why things haven't gotten developed in Wichita? Past, I would say it was the, um, the standoff type attitude where people didn't want to more or less interact with each other and network. But now with the, the culture of hip hop changing, there's definitely a lot of guys that, like in hip hop right now, it's a relatable. I'll say relatable realness type of thing. So where the average Joe can basically be the cool guy. And so with that, you got a lot of people that are coming to the forefront that want to be rappers. Whereas before, in Wichita at least, there were a lot of guys that were more or less just street type of guys. Right. There was no room for regular Joes that had a good way of words to rap. Right. And so now it's definitely shifting up. Before, it's also um, more or less clubs, DJs, just the network. You got to... What I see now is a lot more network, a lot more speaking with each other, kind of a lot more events of just basically opening up dialogue, opening that door for people to step in. Well, I don't, I like that. I like that. Well, I know you're busy, so I'm not going to keep you long. It's 2012. Big Sam, tell the people where they can find you. Where, where can I get you music? Where can I get you? You can find me at Google Big Sam Clean Mess. You can go to www.com www.twitter.com slash bigsam87 facebook.com slash bigsammusic87 you can um, reverb nation google search big sam I think there's a youtube sam thompson 87 I think there's any more spots I may be at also have a big sam app for you android phone users just basically go to the android market in the search put in big sam you'll get the app You'll find my photos, some interviews, music, biography, booking information, all those types of things. So definitely um, capitalizing on the social media. Put them down. That have to, that to. And we, we forget anything? I always, I always don't know. I'm an info, informal individual. I don't, you <laughs> tell me, I want to make sure that we capture everything. Yeah. I want to yeah. make sure that um, 2012, I feel, is going to be really special. And, you know, I, I picked up on you towards the later half of last year and definitely sitting back from where my position is, you know, yeah. I kind of see everything. 
and you were one of the individuals that really caught my eye. It's like, okay, this guy's out here grinding, out here doing his thing. So definitely, I want to say uh, congratulations on the things that you concluded last year with, and I definitely look forward to seeing more of you in 2012. I appreciate that, and you definitely will. I appreciate that. You appreciate it even beyond. <laughs> hey, listen, okay, it's not a game anymore, okay? We're, young Black is successful in Wichita is coming to do the thing. Ladies and gentlemen, you got anything else you want to say to the people? Clean mess up everything. That's basically it. Oh, everything. <laughs> I'll just stop. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the CityStreetsMe.com. We are here with Big Sam. Clean mess over everything. Find him where he told you. You'll find him on the City Streets webpage, City Streets Facebook page. City Streets is going to be a clean mess over everything. It's going to be a 2012 year. Get a part of the movement because this is part of it. 2012 is kicking off beautifully here at City Streets. Sam, we want to say thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank City you. Streets, me. We'll catch you around. We're out of here. One.